Hey guys, I'm Bound to Divide, your tutor for today's video brought to you by Production Music Live. Today we're going to be making a melodic house loop that sounds like this. <music> Okay, first of all, let's just make sure that we're in our arrangement view by clicking on this button up here or hitting tab on our keyboard. The first sound I want to make is a drone sound and we're going to basically just place one note down on a MIDI channel. So let's just highlight a portion of this over here and hit Control Shift M. And we're going to be working in D major. So if you set your scale to D major here, yeah, uh, you can see all the notes that we're going to be working with. And we're going to be placing our first note at F sharp 3 over here. And this is going to be our drone note. And if you look at the D major scale, that's the third note in the scale, the major third. Okay, next up we're going to be loading up a sound. Um, if we just click on sounds here. We're going to be in this ambient and evolving category. And we're going to search for dark swarm. Double click on that and that loads it into this MIDI channel over here. And if we play it, that's how it sounds. So I'm just going to turn that down a bit by dragging the slider over here down. And I want to change the tempo of my beat here. So I'm just going to go up to the top here and click and type 124. Uh, and then we can just zoom in a bit by clicking, hovering over here until this changes to a little magnifying glass, clicking and dragging down uh, so that we can see the loop that we're going to be working with. So at the moment we can see this is four bars long. I think that's a bit short, so let's just click and drag this out so that we make it eight bars long. Okay, next up we're going to start writing a melody. I always find it's it's easiest to write the melody first and then uh, build the harmonies around that melody. So I'm going to highlight four bars over here. And we are going to grab operator for this and we're going to actually make our own sound. Uh, it's just going to be like a simple saw wave kind of pluck sound. So if we click over here on instruments, we can see operator over here, we double click on it, and uh, we're just going to place a few notes down so we can hear the sound that we're making. And our first note is going to be placed at uh, D3 over here. And then we're going to count three sixteenth notes. So if this is divided into sixteenths, the length of this will be three sixteenth notes. And then going up to F sharp and then going back down to D. So we're going doom din doom doom din doom din doom. So we can just highlight this and hit control D to copy that over again. And then I want to take the D down. So if we copy this whole thing over, control D, and then move the D down to an A. And then I want to change the last bar over here so that we have a bit of a change in the melody. And we're going to go up from the F, we're going to change this to an A, and then we're going to bring this A up to an E, and then it's going to go din dun. So we're going to go change this to a D, and this one to C sharp. And now this will just loop back around. We 
Okay, so let's set up our sound now. We're going to change this first oscillator to a saw wave. And we're just going to bring down the frequency over here because it's going to be very loud to start out with. So I'm just turning this filter down. And I also want to turn down this drone over here. It's a bit starting to annoy me a little bit. Okay, then we're going to add a second oscillator, but before we add the second oscillator, we need to make sure that these are not uh, FMing each other. So you can change the way that the oscillators are set up. At the moment, you see they're all stacked on top of each other. And what that means is that if I start turning this up, this oscillator is going to start modulating this one. Um, so we don't want that. We want them to just basically be running in serial. So I'm going to click on this little uh, icon over here and just change them to that setup over here. And then the second oscillator, we're going to add some noise to it. So we're going to choose noise white. And we're just going to turn that up a bit. You won't be able to hear it clearly until you open this up. And you also can't hear it because of the shape of the envelope is doing this plucky sound. So we need to just boost that up. So we grab this little square and then that just sets the sustain to zero. Now we can hear it. And we're just going to bring that frequency back down. And the volume of this can come down a bit. Okay, then I want to give this a little bit of like a plucky feeling. So I'm going to bring down this level over here. And the same thing with this one. And I'm just going to give it a bit more release, like maybe two seconds. Okay, so now it's it, that's causing the notes to kind of overlap now. It almost gives like the illusion of kind of like reverb. Sometimes it can be nice to use release instead of reverb to kind of let notes decay out over time. Okay, then I just want to grab some delay. And we just, I just clicked up here and typed delay and then go to all results. And we're going to bring that down a bit for dry wet. And we're going to make this ping pong. And we're just going to bring this filter. I'm going to click on this point and just drag my mouse down. So it makes it a bit more of like a band pass. And I just want to drag it up so that there's not so many lows in it. Let's maybe go into our filter over here and just go to the envelope amount. And I'm just going to tap on my keyboard, the up arrow, and just see how it sounds when we start increasing this envelope amount. I want it to be a little bit brighter, but not too bright. I think 8% sounds good to me. Okay, next up we're going to be writing some chords and you'll see, you'll hear how like the melody kind of starts coming together when we start changing the bass notes around it um, and all the other harmonies too. So let's make a new MIDI channel. We're going to hit Control, Shift and T for a new MIDI channel. And then I'm going to use Operator again for this one. And it's just going to be a very simple sound. We double click on operator here and we are changing it to a saw wave and I'm just going to literally bring this down to like 900 hertz or something and uh, now we've just got a saw wave going into a filter and that's pretty much going to be the base of our sound it's just going to be a very simple pad and then we're going to add some reverb to it afterwards so let's just highlight this section and we're going to make a midi clip covering this entire thing over here Okay, and then our notes, our bass notes are going to go 
from G, which is the fourth note in our scale, and we're going to be moving down to the D. So when we move from the G to the D, it's going to feel, feel like quite a big resolution uh, because we're moving from the fourth, which is quite a powerful note in the scale, down to the D. So it's going to feel like a big movement, but it's also going to feel like when we when we land here on this D note, it's going to feel like this big sense of coming home and resolution especially because we're in a major scale that's going to be even stronger because we're going to have a big like major chord um, and these are just a bit high so I'm just going to highlight them and hold shift and drop them down to G1 and D1 here So you can hear it already gives it that really nice warm uh, coming home feeling. Okay, so these are our basically our mid bass notes, and then we're going to add some more bass notes below that. We're just going to highlight these, hit Control C and Control V, and then we're going to hold Shift and hit down, and that's we've just created a copy of these notes one octave down. So now you can, if we open up an EQ over here. EQ8, uh, we can now see that there's this fundamental note that's going to come up over here, and then we have another note a bit higher, so it's kind of covering all our bases. Okay, then the next note we're going to be adding is an F sharp, so let's just click here and we're going to drag it all the way across, and let's just hear that. Okay, that's a bit low, so we're going to add that up one octave higher, highlighted, hold shift and press up. Okay, so if you've recognized these chords by now, then you've got a good ear, they're from Ben Burma's Father Ocean. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with borrowing chords from songs as long as the you know the final piece doesn't sound like the original song. Um, so it's it's a very common thing for musicians to take chords out of other songs and adapt them into their own songs. Next, we're going to just be adding some reverb. So let's just go to hybrid reverb over here. I'm going to search hybrid, and we're going to bring the dry wet up. Okay, now because this is our pad, we don't want all these fundamental notes in there. I'm going to just high pass them a bit with this over here. I'm going to change it and then high pass it up to there. And I'm just going to bring down this pad's volume. Okay, and then we're going to get all of our bass back by making a nice warm analog bass sound for this. So I'm going to hit Control Shift T new MIDI channel and I'm going to just hold control and drag this MIDI clip down. I'm going to go into it and I'm going to delete everything but the bass notes and then we're going to go into analog which is an instrument over here. Open up analog and let's just solo this and hear the sound. Okay, so that's more or less the sound that we're going for. We just want to kind of filter it down a bit. And I also want to um, change the second oscillator to be playing a fifth up, perfect fifth. So here we're going to go and change the octave, plus one. And then the semitones over here are going to be plus seven. And we're just going to grab an EQ so that we can see this visually. It looks like all my bass notes are in the right place. We've got a nice fundamental here sitting in the sub range. Let's bring down the frequency over here. Now I don't like how the beginning has this like really strong attack to it. So I'm going to just change the envelope amount here from four. We're gonna try bring it down just by tapping the down arrow. Sounds good to me. And then I also want to give it a little bit of attack. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna bring the frequency down to 200-ish. So let's just turn that down. And I wanna just turn down the second oscillator a bit. Let's try bringing this envelope back up a bit. And maybe bring up the decay too, so it kind of it doesn't, it's not so plucky, but it's just kind of the, the frequencies are slowly fading out. So just turn up the decay here. And if you look at this frequency over here, you'll see one note is kind of sticking out quite a bit. And I kind of just want to bring that down a bit. So it's a bit more in line with all these falling notes. Let's boost the sub a little bit here. Okay, let's hear them together. bring down the envelope amount a little bit. And let's just bring up the volume a bit. Now we're kind of getting this um, almost like a buildup of frequencies around that F sharp note. So I think if we pitch this F sharp up one octave, hold shift and hit up arrow. It sounds a bit better up there, and I've just turned up the volume a bit. And let's just try and reduce that F sharp note on the pad a little bit more. I'm going to go up and find it, which is this one. You can hear that kind of ringing out quite hard, so I'm going to just reduce that a bit. Okay, so now I want to double the length of this loop. I'm going to just hold Alt and click at the top here to close all of them. And then I'm going to highlight everything and duplicate it. And then I want to add like a string or something that's just adding to the harmonies and changing things up a little bit. So we're gonna hit Control Alt T uh, for a new MIDI channel. I'm gonna make a new MIDI clip, Control Shift M. And then we're going to go up here to sounds and let's look for strings. Um, and then these second stellar strings are the one I wanna use. Okay, so we're going to be making a melody over here. We're gonna be starting here at D3 and just hearing that. Okay, so we're gonna go up to the E over here. And then we're gonna place another note down here at the A. And if that loops around, it has really a nice resolution when it comes back to D. Yeah, very nice. 
Okay, I'm just going to bring down the volume of the string. Because I still want the other sound, our main pluck, to be at the front of the mix. Okay, so let's just uh, rename everything for good measure. So we're going to hit Control and R on the first channel, and this is going to be our drone. We're going to hit Tab again, and I believe that was our pad. No, that's our melody. Uh, so that's melody, and then here is our pad. Hit Tab again, bass, and string. And I'm just going to grab this loop brace and drag it out so that we can hear the full section. Okay guys, so if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, uh, feel free to check out productionmusiclive.com. You can support us by enrolling in a course or checking out some of the awesome sounds on there. Also drop a comment, leave a like, and subscribe to the channel if you're finding this helpful. Okay, now I just want to quickly change the color of these. Um, generally I like to make my bass a color that kind of stands out, so I'm going to use this uh, kind of like pinkish color and then the rest of my sounds over here I'm going to highlight them all by holding shift and clicking on the first and the last one right click and then I'm going to make this one like this bluey kind of color and then I'm going to highlight all of these and right click assign track color to clips and then I'm going to group them all by uh, by hitting shift and clicking on the first one and then clicking on the last one and hitting control G. And then we'll just rename this our instruments. And we're going to minimize that. And then we are going to find our kick. So I'm going to just use a kick from my sample pack on Production Music Live, which is kick 07. That's probably my favorite kick. And then we're just going to place it on this audio channel and we're going to duplicate it out on each beat. So I'm just going to highlight the beat here and hit Control D three times and then highlight this section again and just copy it out until it fills out everything. Okay, it's a bit loud and it's going into the red over there and distorting, so we're just going to bring down the kick. Okay, that sounds good. And I just want to sidechain everything to the kick, so I'm going to double click on instruments here. And then I'm going to go and find a compressor. I'm just going to double click here and then just search for a compressor. And uh, double click. We're going to expand this out, enable sidechain, and take sidechain input from the kick. Okay, so what this is going to do is whenever the kick hits, all the instruments are going to get turned down briefly in volume, and then it's going to allow the kick to come through a bit more clearly. So you can see the waveform of the kick in here, but nothing, the compressor is not doing anything because this little threshold um, is sitting above the volume of the kick. So if I just drag this down, you can hear that's a very exaggerated example, but we can just bring it up a bit. And I want to just go to this EQ and turn the frequency amount here. I'm just going to make it 700. And that makes it so that we're only really listening to the high end, the clickiness of the kick. And that gives us a much sharper point to work with. So we can bring down this threshold again. bring up the release to around 50, 50 milliseconds. Just going to play with this a little bit. And that's quite a nice sounding side chain, I think. Okay, next up we're going to make our clap, and we're going to make this out of two layers, so I'm just going to hit Control shift t And I'm going to use MIDI channels for this, so I actually want two of them. I'm going to click on this MIDI channel and hit Control d and then I'm just going to place them in a group by highlighting both and hitting Control G. And then we're going to rename this our clap group. Control R to rename. Okay, so now I'm going to make some MIDI clips here. 
I'm just going to double click here. That's a quick way to add a MIDI clip. And I want to place my clap on every second beat. So we need to place a note at C3 over here. Uh, on the two and on the four, 1.2 and 1.4. We're gonna drag that out. And then we're just gonna hold control and drag this one down. So now we've got MIDI clips set up for both of our claps. The first clap we're gonna use is, again from my sample pack, we're gonna be using clap six. Turn that down a bit. And then the problem with this clap is it has a really nice tone, I think, but it's not like sitting at the front of the mix. It needs something a bit drier to be layered with it. So I'm going to use this clap 02 over here on the second one. So we'll just click on this MIDI channel here and double click on clap 2. Now you can hear if I turn this off. It's kind of giving it a lot more presence. So I'm just going to turn this down a bit. And then we're going to set the volume of this by turning down the whole channel. Okay, I think that sounds good. Next up, we're going to need some hats. So let's do control shift T for a new MIDI channel. And we're gonna use a hat here from Deep Premium Volume 4. We go into hats over here and it's the first hat. So we're going to just make a new MIDI clip over here. I'm gonna double click and make sure this is set to 16th notes. And then we're gonna to go to C3 here and we're going to place a MIDI clip on each 16th note. All right, double click on this hi-hat over here. And we're just gonna drag that out across this entire thing. Okay, so I, I want these to be nice and quiet in the mix, so I'm gonna turn them down. And I kind of want them to be bouncing around a bit, so I'm gonna click on controls over here and then go to random pan, and I'm just gonna turn that up until it sounds right. Yeah, I like it at 15%. And I also wanna give it a bit of bounce, so I'm going to use a side chain to make the hats kind of bounce around, um, bounce around the kick, I mean. I'm gonna to go to instruments over here, this group that we have. I'm gonna hit control C on the compressor, and then just paste it over here. Okay, so I don't want the side chain to be as deep, so I'm gonna bring up the threshold of it. But I would like it to be a bit longer, so we can bring up the release, maybe to about 70 milliseconds. Yeah, let's set it at eight. So now if I solo that, you can hear there's a bit of bounce in, the in these hats. Okay, next up we're going to add a offbeat hi-hat, and we're gonna go into my Midnight Punch over here, and I'm going to grab an offbeat hat. I think I like this one. So I'm gonna grab this one and drag it onto there, and then drag this out. Okay, it's a bit loud, so we're gonna turn that down. Okay, and I want to just high pass this a bit, so I'm gonna click on the search bar here and type EQ, then go to all results and double click on EQ8, and then just change this first one to the high pass. And I'm going to drag this out a bit. I think I want to add a ride next, so we're going to hit Control Shift and T for a new MIDI clip. And we're going to go into Deep Premium Volume 1 over here. Um, 
and we're just going to find a ride dry 002, this one, and I'm going to double click and create a MIDI clip. And we're going to double click on dry 02. Place a note at C3, wherever that is, there it is. And now we just need to make a nice pattern with this. I'm just going to turn it down because it's going to be very loud. Okay, so let's see. I think it's quite nice sounding to have them kind of following the pattern of the melody. So I'm going to drag this out. Next we're going to do the same trick as we did with the hi-hats. It's going to controls and add some random padding. And I want to high pass this a bit. So we can we don't have to use an EQ to do that. When we're using this simpler, we can go into this little section over here and we can change the filter to the high pass filter and just bring down the frequency. Okay, so now that's nice and splashy. And I want to make it even more splashy by adding some reverb to it. So I'm going to search hybrid over here and go to all results, add the hybrid reverb, and we're going to change this algorithm here to shimmer, which is like this bright reverb. And if I set, if we solo this and set it to 100% wet, we can hear it. Okay, I'm going to change this blend here. Now we can, now we're hearing just the shimmer algorithm. And we're going to go into the EQ here and just boost the high end even more. And then bring down the dry wet. Okay, so that's going to add like this nice gentle noise at the top of the track and kind of fill it out. Uh, next up, I just want to add a little drum fill at the end of this or halfway through this loop uh, just to kind of introduce the... Um, the strings. So let's just go here and we're going to search 909 snare and we're just going to grab here we're going to go to samples we're going to grab this hard snare. I'm just going to drop it here at the bottom and that's going to automatically make a new audio channel for me and place it over there and then I just want to place it right at the end. I think I want it to hit twice, so I'm going to just shorten this and then hit Control D. And I think we can add a crash too, so let's just search 909 crash and we're going to drag that to the bottom here and just turn this down quite a lot. And let's uh, add some delay to this crash so it kind of rings out a bit longer. So it will delay. And we're going to make it ping pong and give it about 80% feedback. Okay, I don't want the dry wet to be that much so I'm just going to bring this down a bit. And uh, let's make it so that it's we change this to the one here so the delay is a bit quicker. There we go, that sounds nice to me. Okay, I think the bass on this could be a little bit louder, so I'm just going to go into instruments here and I'm going to go to our bass and just turn, turn up the volume here. A bit. Okay, that's sounding nice to me. Okay, so that's pretty much our loop done. We're just going to quickly do some naming and coloring to organize it all. So the first channel, we're going to hit Control R and name that Kick. 
The next one's already been named, so we're going to hit tab twice to go to the next channel. And this is our closed hat. So I'm just going to name it CHH for closed hi hat. And then this is our open hi hat, OHH. And our ride, snare crash. And now we're just going to give these all a nice color. I'm going to make them all the same color. I usually use green, um, but I don't know if it'll match this. So I'm just going to make it like a nice uh, purple. And then I'm going to highlight them all, right click and set assign track color to group tracks. Highlight them all again and hit control G and name this group drums. Okay, lastly, I'm just going to put a limiter on the master so that we can hear it at our maximum volume without clipping. I'm going to go up here and search limiter. And we're just going to turn up the gain until we see this needle over here dipping down just slightly. Okay, so I really want to hear this uh, section loop around again so we can hear that nice string resolve. So I'm just going to highlight this section and hit Control D and drag this out. And now I just want to remove this crash over here. Okay, lastly, I just want to add some automation to this melody because automation is a, plays a huge role in the style of music. You know, you can't loop this melody throughout the whole track without anything changing. Uh, so we're just going to click on this button here to enable automation mode. And then we're going to go into our filter frequency over here. And we're going to play with that by bringing it down and turning it up. So I'm going to click on that and then you'll see this dotted line appears. And I can place a point there. And by dragging this up, if I just hit play, we can hear that opening and closing. So I'm going to start it off a bit quite a, a bit more filtered out. So let's drag it down to like 800 hertz. And we're going to let this filter up over here. And then maybe at the end of this one, it can rise up a little bit more and go up to about there. So let's just hear that. Yeah, I like that, but I'm going to just delete this point so that it kind of fades out before that next bar starts. Okay, so you can see I just kind of randomly did that while I was listening to it. Um, if you're making your own track, I suggest spending quite a lot of time on these automations because they can really bring life to the track. Uh, but let's listen to our final loop. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And consider supporting us by visiting us on productionmusiclive.com and purchasing a sample pack or course. Thank you and goodbye.